In my generation, many people went into psychology, but at the time, I thought that to really understand the brain required understanding the biology behind thought and other higher processes. I've been studying the posterior parietal cortex, the place where intent and the awareness of intent are first formed. Based on this research, we began to think that we could design smart computers that could analyze people's intentions, tap into the commands that will go out to the body uh, to form actions. A brain-machine interface is a machine that's connected directly to the brain to receive signals, then it usually also has a component that decodes or makes sense of those signals. You know, when you go to reach for a glass of water, you don't think how your fingers are configured and how much force you have to apply. You just have the intent to reach for the glass. And so we thought we'd tap into those high-level signals to uh, help patients who are paralyzed. Eric Sorto is locally from Los Angeles, and in his early 20s, he uh, had a gunshot wound to his neck, and as a result, he can't move any of his limbs, uh, his legs uh, or his arms. So the first step with Eric was to implant electrodes into his brain. This was done with a brain surgery. Arrays of electrodes were placed within the posterior parietal cortex. The basic aim of the work is for him to be able to control his environment just with his thoughts. first time I made the robotic arm work, it was an out-of-body experience. I was so excited. I wish I could jump out of my wheelchair and high-five everybody because it was just so amazing and so easy. I, I didn't expect it to be so easy. The implant itself is very tiny, it's uh, four by four millimeters, and it has uh, 100 electrodes on it to record from a population of neurons. Then we connect the subject uh, to the machines that interpret their brain signals. I just seen the project as something that can bring so much independence to people in my condition. <laughs> One of our patients can also play piano just with their thoughts. Just the intent to move the fingers can be used for a variety of applications. We've been able to uh, distinguish and decode some things that are pre-conscious. And so we can actually design decoders that can decode activity before you're aware of it. Many people are very interested in the possibility of this being used in healthy people for augmentation. You could imagine things like uh, direct communications through thought between people being able to increase strength by brain control of an exoskeleton. We've also uh, found that uh, we can uh, input signals by stimulation of the brain. So you can imagine getting your email or uh, looking something up on Google just by thinking about it. So in a sense, having a cell phone in the brain. I never dreamed that anything of this was possible, but after seeing the results, 
I can see how the sky's the limit with the project because it's so successful and we do accomplish pretty much magic here.